Welcome, and in today's video, I briefly wanna go over how I make my stencils. It's not a complicated process. I use Procreate on my tablet, so you will need an Apple tablet. You also need a pencil for that tablet, and you'll need the app Procreate. There are many apps out there, but Procreate is by far, in my opinion, the best for making stencils or just as a great tool to have. So if you guys are ready to check this out, then let's go. So it procreates the app that we're gonna be using. Here it is right here, click on that. I already have it open to a new um, setup here. I've got a white page in the background. This is what I'm gonna be working off of. And I've imported a image. The image that I've imported is a flower, a rose. There it is. Now I need to make a stencil of this. And I wanna show you guys how I do that. So as you can see, the background is its own layer. Then I have layer one, which is the actual image I want to stencil, but I want my stencil to be on top of that image. So we're gonna add a layer, make sure I'm in that layer. Now, if I were to line this in black, you really wouldn't see it that well. Black on black, it's gonna be hard to see. So what I do is I just pick a color, any color you want. You can go with blue, red, whatever. So we'll go with, we'll go with green because I use that color all the time. And I'm gonna start with my studio pen. Uh, I'm gonna have the streamline turned up pretty high. Sometimes the streamline can get annoying. That just helps take the jitters out of your hand. It makes the process a bit smoother, but it's also good practice to potentially turn that down and just get your hand used to lining. Also, the streamline can be a bit annoying sometimes, but as a whole, you can just go back in, turn it down, turn it up as you need it. So I have streamline. Over here is where I'm gonna control the thickness of my line all the way up. We're gonna get obviously a thick line. Tap with two fingers and it deletes, pretty much undoes what you did. So I'm gonna come down here and find a nice weight that I think would work. This looks pretty good. So that's what we're gonna do. First thing I'm gonna start off with just going around everything, every petal, start there. And then we'll go back and start putting our lines in to let us know where we wanna shade. And if I run into a black spot here, I'll just stop. You can, you can go ahead and predict where that's gonna be, but I just follow the stencil exactly the way it is. So I'll stop right there. We'll come down over here and we'll probably start it right about here. Again, I'm just going around and lining everything that I know is gonna need a line. So I'm not gonna put any shading spots in right now, just the line stuff. And one of the great parts about using Procreate or apps like this to make your stencils is that if you make a mistake or a line comes out a little wonky or whatnot, double tap, it goes away. Um, now you could say, well, you should be hyper-focused when you're making the stencil. I mean, you're gonna tattoo it, right? Well, you do a lot of stencils. I'm studying the stencil while I'm outlining it. If it's not perfect, every line is not exactly where it is, on the reference, it's not the end of the world. I put time into the stencil, but I do have to keep in mind that 
I'm not rendering the tattoo right now. I'm giving myself the best guideline I can so that I can render this tattoo. But nonetheless, it is nice to be able to undo things whenever you want, back a line up, layer stuff, change things up. It gives you, as a creator, more options. So anyhow, let's keep going. Now, something you do want to be careful with is the fact that you can zoom this in so far. You could get every single little detail, but not every tattoo can have every single detail. Size of the tattoo is going to matter depending on how much detail you can put in there. Or maybe just as an artist, how much detail you can put in there. So if you want to go in here and get every single little detail, that's fine. But just make sure that the tattoo can have all that detail. Just because you can see it all doesn't mean it's gonna translate to the skin as easily. Because remember, on the skin, we can't zoom in. We only have what we can see. So that small, small, tiny, tiny stuff that you're zooming in on, you gotta try to tattoo that without any zoom in, if you will. So that's something to keep in mind and um, just think about when you're making these. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over here again and I'm gonna add a layer. So I'll add a layer on top of that. A great way to check to see if your lining or whatever it is you're doing is done, you can just drop your background out. So currently that's what I have for lines. Now I don't personally think that that's gonna make for a great stencil. So now comes the time where we can refine it a bit and let, ourse let ourselves know where some shading marks are gonna be and whatnot. What you can do and I like doing this sometimes, is I go back to my inking, I go to my studio pen, and I turn the spacing up. Now what that does is, as you can see here, is I have a bunch of dots now. So when I write, I get dots. That's what I use to let me know where I need to shade. We'll put our stencil back in, or our reference. We'll load our reference back up. We will then make sure we're on our new layer now it's this is where it becomes up to you and what you want to do how much detail you want to put in so for now i'm just going to do some basic stuff here so i know that i'm going to be shading really dark right there and this is pretty much what we're doing now we're dotting letting ourselves know hey this is where we're going to be putting you know our dark at or our shadows or anything like that and then you pretty much allow yourself to look at the stencil and then look at the reference and go, okay, that's what I do in there. Let me explain this. There's really no wrong way to make a stencil. As long as you can follow the stencil and a tattoo comes out to the best of your ability, then that's fine. So, Remember, this is just how I'm doing it. You can do it however you want. You can learn, take stuff from this, add stuff to it, whatever. Uh, same thing applies. So here we have what I know is black down here. And then just let myself know, we got some shading coming up out of here. Um, for me, I, if you want to put all these lines in there, you, you can, and you would go and do that when you're lining and you probably come in here with a, with a tight three and just lightly with a gray wash, put some of these uh, marks in. If you're just kind of giving it the shadowed look, then this style I'm showing you right now should work best. And again, over here, 
Now you don't have to use these dots, you could easily just take that right back down, hit done, and then come in here and make your own marks. Sometimes this is actually easier to read than a bunch of tiny dots. Sometimes those tiny dots get annoying. Uh, so I switch it up sometimes. You can add lines like this so that you know, hey, we got, you can dot them so you know this is the direction of my shading. This is, this is where it's dark. Same over here. I mean, give yourself an idea of where those shade marks are coming out of if you want. You can hatch the black areas so you know exactly where that's going to be. So now you can look at your stencil and go, okay, anywhere where there's hatch markings, I know that that's going to be all black in there. Which makes your workflow a little better when you're tattooing, helps you be able to put those blacks in uh, a little bit better. So anyhow, you see how crazy a stencil can get or how very simple a stencil can be. Nonetheless, this is how I make the stencil. And what I really like though, is when I go to do the tattoo, I have this uh, exact image just like this, if this were my finished stencil, just like this. And I would have it open with the green lines going around everything, my shade marks, you know, where they need to be, so that I can look right at the tattoo, find, you know, if I'm tattooing, I find a spot, okay, wait, I'm confused, look over there, all right, all right. Just double checking what you're doing. It's not that you, aren't confident, it's just that you wanna make sure that you're following the stencil to the best of your abilities. So having it like this is a little bit easier. So we'll simply drop out our background, drop out that background, oh, we'll put that back. So this, if, if we stopped right now, this essentially would be what our stencil looked like. Now don't be scared of this because we did mix a few different techniques, if you will, into this, so it kinda is a hosh posh. But if this were your finished stencil, all I would do is I'd come over here, combine these two layers, both my shading layers and my lining layers like that. Then I would touch the adjustments, come down here to hue and saturation, and I would drop all of this down. So now I essentially have a black stencil to print off. So again, if this was the stencil, I'd print it off like this, share, JPEG, come down here to print. It would print it. I would then take that image, size it up for my client, figure out what size they like, print it off at that size, run it through my stencil machine, and there we go. Well guys, I just wanna say thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you guys want more information about this, as again, this was just a brief um, video, just wanted to show you guys what I do. Again, if you want more information on this, let me know and I'll be uh, more than happy to make a few more. Nonetheless, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and ring the bell to get notifications when I post. And until next time, guys, peace.